What's up guys, this is Coach Donnie from Elevate Yourself, where we change lives through volleyball, training, and inspirational content. Welcome to my volleyball coach reaction to Q Season 4, Episode 4. If you're new to this channel, I'm a volleyball coach, volleyball player, and personal trainer who provides volleyball tutorials, jump training workouts, and other cool volleyball videos. You can also follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok for more content. Thanks for clarifying how in Japan, kids are allowed to train in the gym on their own without adult supervision. The reason why that's not allowed in America is because we are a very Sue happy country. Touch me and I'll sue. If a minor is working out on their own in a gym and gets injured, they could probably sue the school, they can sue the coach, and they can sue whoever they want to try to get more money because legally the school and the coach are liable for the safety of the child. But maybe in Japanese culture, the child is responsible for its own safety. Not to say that they're gonna recklessly allow kids to do whatever they want, but at the end of the day, they're not gonna look for a reason just to sue people just to get money out of them, which I think is a very beneficial part of the Japanese culture compared to American culture. Also in American society, I think there's gonna be more kids that are gonna do stupid things compared to Japanese society. I completely agree that becoming a ball boy was probably the best thing that has happened so far in Hinata's volleyball career. Even if he was given a spot to train with the other players, I actually think becoming a ball boy forced him to slow down, reflect on the actual process of learning the game instead of just mindlessly trying to spike and get better and compete with other people. It forces him to be more thoughtful and analytical about his play style and also to consciously study other players and learn from them. Sometimes you really have to slow things down in order to get more out of the situation. And that goes back to my previous point in the last video about why it's important to coach as soon as you can, even if you don't think you're gonna be a good coach, just having the coach's perspective is gonna make your game so much better. This was an interesting scene for me to see because I thought that Kageyama missed the set, but in fact, he was actually just being too advanced and too tricky for the team that he was training with. And the fact that he did it so casually, like you said, just goes to show how much skill Kageyama truly has, even in the context of some of the best under 19 players in the nation. If you've been enjoying my videos, please consider supporting me on Patreon, where you receive exclusive access to my monthly live Q&A sessions, monthly podcasts, my private blog, behind the scenes footage, and more. Now let's get this high Q party started. It's gotta be Hinata sweeping. Oh, that's not Hinata Oi. sweeping for once. Oi. Oi. Do you want my food? Yeah, Hinata has a lot of reason not to trust Suki. Oh, Tsuki asking him to practice with him. <laughs> Man, Hinata's mouth looked a little weird on that one. That one looks good. I don't know if this was intentional. You see how long his neck is, but how small his face became in that jaw and upper lip and nose proportion looks way too small compared to the rest of the body and the face. Sometimes when you're expressing extreme emotion, you do want to exaggerate some of the proportions, but this is not a good use of it. So I can't tell whether this is just low quality animation or a poor use of exaggerated proportions. The obligatory thank yous. And Tsuki bows in. Man, good suggestion from Tsuki. I'm starting to like this song the more I listen to it. I was very hopeful. Hey, one thing I noticed is that Kageyama, everyone's hands are down and kind of on the side and running. And Kageyama's hands are like this, like maybe he's preparing his setting hands. Let me know if you guys noticed that detail too. National Training Center. 
food. Broccoli. Is that his nickname? Broccoli? <laughs> yes, Kageyama is awkward. But Hinata doesn't care, that's why he gets along with him. I think this is one of the players that we haven't seen yet. No, this is the guy, the germaphobe. Sakusa. <laughs> That's the assumption. His Shiratori Sawa must not have been playing well. Yeah, Tsuki did. Tsuki put his finger on the line. <laughs> Sakusa is an interesting character for sure. <laughs> I just think it's so funny that he has a mask, but very fitting to his personality if he's this paranoid. I do like his hairstyle though. <laughs> right back at you. Kakeyama accidentally disses him. Bath time. Oh, yeah. The germaphobe. I gotta say, Kageyama reminds me a little bit of Ushijima in the sense that they just say what's on their mind and they're not dishonest people. What they say is what they truly believe and more often than not, what they observe is true. Whereas most people are trying to embellish what they say or assume things about people. But Kageyama is pretty black and white. He just is a little bit more emotional, but I would say he's like a more emotional version of Ushijima, in my opinion. I think this is the guy you you were saying that I thought was Bokuto, but is not Bokuto. He looks like the enemy of Sonic the Hedgehog. And these food illustrations are even better than previous seasons. I mentioned in a previous episode that the illustration quality is definitely higher. Let's enjoy this one for a moment. I think this is the fried chicken, maybe karaage. Wow, look at all these textures. Let's count how many types of browns and yellows are in here. One, two on the outside, three, kind of this blended yellow, brown, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm counting 10 or 11 different colors just for this fried chicken here. Oh, we got this, looks like snapper. And these guys are eating great. Got this wasabi chunk here, broccoli. And I'm really loving these textures of this illustrator here. Hmm, why would he say that? Hmm. Is that an indirect insult? Hmm. Maybe Washijo Sensei has realized that his way is not the only best way. There's multiple good ways. Mm -hmm. Very fitting that he not to score the, the final point. Yeah, 
that a short player could score off of a spike against the best team in the area. You know, if Washijo Sensei does things differently as a result of this loss, it goes to show his coaching ability. A good coach adapts and evolves. Oh, raw oysters. I love raw oysters. These guys must have been former teammates here. The coaches. Oh, Hinata gets to practice some left side hitting. <laughs> uh, that's what everyone assumes about me, because I'm short. Oh, now it's personal. This is great practice for Hinata to hit against great blockers. Triple Broku. <laughs> Everyone's so focused on Hinata that they forgot about Mushroom Head. Oh, this is Suki's music, the, the, the focus music. Oh, there's this line hit. Line against a triple block. That's one of my favorite spots to hit. Suki telling the truth. The approaches in the angle. He opens up to the setter. He rotates down the line. Oh, this is the setter. This is the tall, athletic setter from Date Tech. Oh. That would have been cute if Tsuki said yes. Okay, so that was just so Tsuki could just improve his blocking against a header who can actually see the block well. Stand further away from the net. I wonder what his reasoning was for that. So this is where we see a little bit of the less accurate animation. So I'm going to freeze frame it perfectly here. When you're setting, generally you should be squaring up, which means facing the left side hitter. That's where you're going to have the best vision and where you're going to be able to see majority of the hitters, which are going to be in front of you. And then also how far you are off the net. So even if you're going to be setting in the back row, you still want to square up and then set across your shoulder to the player in the back row. Because if you do what Kageyama is doing here, which is facing the player who he's going to set, you're going to give away your set too early. There's a time and place to do this, but majority of the time you need to be squaring up and facing the left side hitter there. Also, those wrists, they are way too thick. If you look at your own arm, your upper arm is usually thicker with the bicep and the tricep and the brachialis. And then when you zoom down here, it should taper to the wrist. Now you can have thick wrists, but that also means that your upper arm has to be even thicker. I'm not sure what's going on with this line. It looks like a, a sixth thumb in the middle. <laughs> this palm line is pretty good. There should just be another palm wrinkle here, but yeah, not not as sharp in terms of the the detail. So I'm sure Kageyama is a good setter and squares up. That's probably more of an animation mistake. Oh, left hand in the middle. That's right. That's, those are hard to set. More compact and zippy. That means get it out of hands faster. 
Yeah, Kageyama's talented. Those are some strange eyebrows there. But Kageyama is direct and truthful. That was an interesting saying choice. That a back set to this Sonic Sonic's villain here. Ah, this guy jumps super high. Even higher than Hinata. Yeah, I could definitely see the, the downgrade in animation quality here. Proportions are funny, it's not very fluid, and the perspective is off. Still images aren't bad though. Who is this kid here? Sorechi. At least in that scene, they had each person doing a different stretch to make it feel more realistic. <laughs> if you're gonna ask Kageyama a question, he's always gonna answer honestly. I don't think I've seen him before. <laughs> so he's like the little giant on steroids. Because <laughs> your hair. You're a great reference, too. I wonder what he means by that. Yeah, Kageyama can, can seem a little standoffish from the outside. Is he insulting him? Like, all he does is just follow orders? And that's the other setter trying to get under his skin to compete for a spot. I'll be playing mind games, so the second setter has an edge over Kageyama. That's a nice still image there. Really great. And then it's just weird going back to this low animation quality. Thank you. He's not gonna chase that up there. Yeah, if you're attentive to details and the small things, you're gonna be attentive to detail and the big things. Oh, yeah, this is gonna be another perspective for Hinata. The, the overhead perspective. Yep. Great passing technique, let's talk about that. So here he does a great job forming his platform. Well, first moving his body behind the ball and then putting his platform together. But majority of the time, unless they're spiking really hard or doing a powerful jump serve, you still wanna follow through up and towards the target to guide the ball to the target. When you're passing, you don't wanna be passive, no pun intended. But I would say when you're receiving, just so you don't get the two words confused. Don't be passive about how you're passing. Like, don't let the ball take control of you. Sometimes you do have to pull your platform away to absorb force, but majority of the time, you want to attack the ball. Not necessarily spike it with your platform, but you want to meet the ball a little bit so you can actually forcibly change the direction of the ball. And that's really how you best pass float serves. If you let the ball contact your platform, by the time the ball is going to change direction at the last moment and then shank off in another direction. But as you're tracking the ball, if you meet the ball maybe one or two inches earlier, you can interrupt the trajectory of the ball before it changes direction and actually pass the ball in the direction that you want. So you see how it kind of falls through upward. That's 
right. No unnecessary movements. Oh, the middle dug that one. Oh, no, he didn't. He shanked it. I like that intensity from an underclassman. Go all out. <laughs> Let's go back to that and talk about that. This is really interesting that his least favorite phrase is go all out. So I'm going to try to figure out or predict why that is. He kind of reminds me of Kenma, this easygoing, low energy type of attitude. Maybe Kunimi only tries hard when he needs to, meaning if the play is on the line or if the score is close or if he really needs to, but maybe in a practice game when things don't really count or in a low energy situation, he doesn't really go for it. So I'm hoping he's not that type of player because those type of players really annoy me. You can't pick and choose when you're going to go all out. It has to be a habit. And the moment you decide and think, the ball's already gone. And even if the ball is really far off and you go all out for it, that's one of the most inspiring things you can do for a team, especially after you just lost a point. You want to energize them for the next couple points and inspire them with your energy and your intensity. The obligatory shame. Two on two drills. Looking forward to see what that's like. I appreciate that this underclass is not afraid to call out people for their lack of intent. Oh, that's right. I remember from that match where he does conserve his energy. Oh, yeah. Two on two exposes people's lack of ball control because you have to be, you have to cover more court. But I like that they're demanding all players to participate in these more advanced ball control drills. Yeah, you can't win if you're half-assing it, so let's see if Konimi is going to half-ass this one. Good follow-through, look at that technique. Is that considered a dink with the close fist? <laughs> okay, minimal effort to get the job done. Kunimi should be a setter if he's going to be that that calm and that tricky. Okay. <laughs> okay, the animator did get Hinata's facial expression on point. Kind of less awkward, intense furrow of the brow you see there. It's not just eyeballs, but really good job illustrating what an awkward, intense stare looks like from Hinata. Oh, who's paired with Hyakuzawa? Yeah, poor guy. And the best way to get better is just to get thrown in the deep end and just go for it. So he, uh, hopefully he's paired with like the best ball control, best attitude player. 
You should be paired with Hinata. That'll motivate him. So he was with Oda. I don't know who Oda is. Oh, that's some sad words. Oh, he feels like he's only there because of his height. Uh, that's that's exactly who you want to be. Give off the energy that you want to make people better. <laughs> wow, Hinata admitting his dependence on Kageyama. <laughs> that is true. Can't stand it when people complain about their height, about being too tall. And now he is inspired. <laughs> Even when Hinata is trying to chew him out, he inspires people. That's why I like Hinata. Just an inspiring person. Yeah, the better you make your opponent, the better you have a chance to become. Is he going to give me some feedback? Now that he's had the coach's perspective? Is he going to teach him how to read on defense? Hiro Ishii, so it looks like they're rotating partners. <laughs> Using that reach, the two meters reach. Oh, it's too tense. Is that what he's saying? Take it easy? Let's see what wise words he's about to say. Always try to make time for yourselves. I don't understand that. Maybe he's referring back to taking it easy. Like relaxing when you're moving. Let's see what he not the says to him. Oh. So just get the ball up and high. Versus trying to pass it perfectly. That's actually really good advice. Rush it now. Oh yeah. Great advice from Hinata. That is such good advice from Hinata, who everyone calls the simpleton, which he is sometimes. But now that he's got some coaching experience from him, after being a ball boy, he's able to see things a lot more clearly. But that's a great strategy to do when you feel like you're struggling with passing. Sometimes we get so caught up in trying to pass perfectly, like a, a point in space, when you really just have to pass to a generally good area. And even if you can't do that, 
just get behind the ball and just follow through with your platform and get the ball high because we can all do that that doesn't require a lot of skill it just requires you to let go a little bit with the accuracy and just pass it high then you give your setter time to get to the ball and you just have more time to do things because there are going to be some days where your passing is just going to be off and you don't know why and that's the best time to just focus on passing the ball higher than you usually do to give your team time to set up Yes. The crush from Mr. Two Meters. Interesting that Washijo Sensei has his hand over his mouth. <laughs> That's a funny animation from Hinata. That was a good one. Nice kick! Thumbs up. Oh, he gave him a high five. Thought he was gonna give him a corny thumbs up. Oh, Kunimi and Suki. Two people watching him now. <laughs> I wonder why they're staring at him. Maybe they're studying him. Wow, that's a great image. Visually, it's actually a little bit dissonant to go from like low quality animation to high quality illustration because when you're looking at these beautiful still images and then all of a sudden the proportions are off and then they're really good and then they're off it's kind of confusing or, or just not as enjoyable to look at that i think somebody in the comments from the last video said that it's more cost effective to spend money on an illustrator because you can reuse some of those frames and those frames last longer which makes sense but let's enjoy this for a moment Look at how much emotion is being communicated from Kageyama. We see these stress wrinkles around the eyes and then the scrunch of the bridge of the nose and how the eyebrows are angled downward. You got the, the sweat drop on the side of the face. And then you even see how one side of the lip is a little bit higher than the other, like a kind of like a grimace. And the proportions are on point. The perspective is great. Look at the shading of the hair. So this illustration is, is fantastic here. Ah, I just paused it right before the end. Here's my immediate reaction to episode 4. I was very touched that Hinata, even though he's just being a ball boy and not really participating in practice, and he's pretty much interacting with all of the opponents from his season, he still takes the time to encourage people and just be a positive force. And I don't think that was a conscious choice from Hinata. I think he's just naturally a very good-hearted person. And he felt sympathy for Yakuzawa, I think that's his name, and how much he was struggling. And maybe it's because Hinata also struggled so much on his journey to become the player that he is. He knows how it feels to be lost and to struggle. And it's really important to remember for all of us that at one point we were all in Hinata's shoes or Hiyakazawa's shoes. Maybe some people were really blessed to have this natural skill for volleyball, but at some point in our volleyball careers, everyone has struggled at some point. And that's really what makes a great teammate is when we can always remember that because when we remember that we've all struggled, then it's easy for us to identify with a teammate who is struggling. So instead of getting upset at them, you can encourage them and inspire them to be better or just empathize with them as they struggle, right? They might not get better at that moment, but you can make things worse by bringing them down. I was happy to finally see Hinata get to do some volleyball drills after Zuki asked him to block and I thought it was so funny how Hinata said did you secretly ask me because you felt bad for me and then Zuki immediately said no and then Hinata said okay and he moved on the writers of this anime have done a very good job of keeping Hinata's personality very consistent because he's had a few of those awkward moments where he's just so naive and he assumes the best of people and he makes these funny assumptions only to immediately get shut down and that just makes me like Hinata even more. You also get to see Kageyama's character development throughout this episode as he interacts with other players and how he's making an effort to work on his communication skills. So I'm really excited to see 
him develop not just socially but to finally see him set i've been waiting to see him set in a game situation with some of the top players but hopefully that will come in the next episode thanks for watching this video we'll see you guys in the next one